All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. With me is Prashant Kumar Sinha. The headlines: At least 27 people killed in a massive fire in Munka area of Delhi. President Ramnath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi express grief over tragic incident. Prime Minister announces exgratia of two lakh rupees each for the next of kin of those killed. India has the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, says Prime Minister. launches Madhya Pradesh startup policy and startup portal President Ramnath Kovin leaves on a visit to Jamaica and St Vincent and Grenadines security forces neutralized two terrorists involved in killing of Kashmiri Pandit Rahul Bhatt videographic survey of Gyan Vapi mosque in Varanasi to begin today as supreme court refuses to stop the process southwest monsoon to arrive in Kerala ahead of its normal due date India may review situation ahead of monsoon. India creates history in Thomas Cup badminton beat Denmark 3-2 to reach finals for the first time. And in IPL cricket Punjab Kings defeat Royal Challengers Bangalore by 54 runs in Mumbai. At least 27 people lost their lives in a fire incident in Munka area of the national capital yesterday. Delhi fire officials said 12 got injured in the incident and the number of deceased could be increased. as several body parts of people have been found from the spot around 30 fire tenders were rushed to the spot to douse the flame and the fire fighting operation has been concluded the rescue operation is still underway in the area the ndrf team has also reached the spot talking to ai news dwarka fire officer satpal bhardwaj said मेरा नाम सतपाल भारद्वाज है डिविजनल ऑफिसर दिल्ली फायर सर्विस हेडक्वार्टर से और ये साढ़े पाँच बजे मीडियम लेवल की कॉल थी और बेसमेंट ग्राउंड और तीन तीन मंजिल ऊपर कुछ पैकिंग का काम होता था और उसके अंदर जो आग लगी मीडियम फायर लेवल की थी तो उसमें से 27 सेवन कैजुअल साइज कैजुअलिटी निकाली लगातार पाँच घंटे काम करने के बाद ठीक रात को साढ़े दस बजे आग को बुझा लिया गया तो मैसेज दे दिया और उसके बाद हम रिलीव पे आए हैं छह घंटे के बाद तो अभी हमने सारी बिल्डिंग सर्च कर लिया है प्लस सारे फ्लोर के ऊपर आग बुझा दी है सिर्फ थोड़ी सी पॉकेट में आग है टॉकिंग टू मीडिया डेली पुलिस डीसीपी समीर शर्मा सेड ओवर फिफ्टी पीपल है यहाँ पे आग लगी है एक बिल्डिंग में और वहाँ पे फिर हरी पुलिस फोर्स आई और फायर ब्रिगेड आई और यहाँ पे हमने फिर रेस्क्यू मिशन किया यहाँ पे लोग फंसे हुए थे फाइनली सत्ताईस जो है अनआइडेंटिफाइड डेथ हुई है इसमें और तो अबाउट बारह लोग इंजर्ड हैं प्लस हमारी पुलिस फोर्स ने आके शीशा तोड़ा और पचास से पचपन लोगों को रेस्क्यू किया यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह सेड द प्रायोरिटी इज टू इवैक्यूएट पीपल एंड प्रोवाइड इमीडिएट ट्रीटमेंट टू द इंजर्ड Mr Shah termed the incident as very sad. Minister of State for Home Nitinanda Rai has said the owner of the commercial building where the fire broke out has been arrested. Mr Rai said the incident of fire has been taken seriously which is a result of negligence. He said action will be taken against those found found responsible for this negligence. The fire broke out in a commercial building located near Mundka metro station. President Ramnath Kovind has expressed grief over the tragic incident. He extended condolences to the bereaved families. In a tweet, the president wished for speedy recovery of the injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that he is extremely saddened by the loss of lives due to the fire incident. In a tweet, he said that his thoughts are with the bereaved families. Mr. Modi wished speedy recovery of the injured in the tragic incident. The prime minister has announced two lakh rupees each for the next of kin of those who lost their lives in the fire. The injured will be given fifty thousand rupees. The excretion amount will be given from the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said he is shocked and pained to know about this tragic incident. Mr. Kejriwal said he is constantly in touch with officers. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched Madhya Pradesh Startup Policy during the Madhya Pradesh Startup Conclave held in Indore. Mr. Modi also launched the Madhya Pradesh Startup Portal and interacted with the startup on entrepreneurs. via video conferencing yesterday addressing the gathering the prime minister said that india's startup revolution will become an important hallmark of azadi ka amrit kal today the country has a proactive startup policy and adequate startup leadership he said desh mein jitni proactive startup niti hai utna hi parishrami startup netrutva bhi hai 
इसलिए देश एक नई युवा ऊर्जा के साथ विकास को गति दे रहा है एमपी की स्टार्टअप नीति के तहत स्टार्टअप और इंक्यूबेटर्स को वित्तीय सहायता दी गई है मैं इन प्रयासों के लिए और इस आयोजन के लिए मध्य प्रदेश सरकार को देश के स्टार्टअप इकोसिस्टम को और आप सबको बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं Mr Modi said that startups in India are turning out to be a powerful vehicle to fulfill the dreams of the common Indian youth. In the year 2014 there were only 300 to 400 startups in India whereas today this number has reached up to 70,000. India has the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Aaj hamare desh mein kareeb 70,000 recognized startups hain. आज भारत में दुनिया का तीसरा सबसे बड़ा स्टार्टअप इकोसिस्टम है हम दुनिया के सबसे बड़े यूनिकॉर्न हब्स में भी एक ताकत के रूप में उभर रहे हैं आज औसतन आठ या दस दिन के भीतर भीतर भारत में एक स्टार्टअप यूनिकॉर्न बन जाता है यूनिकॉर्न में बदल रहा है The Prime Minister said that the reason for the success of our startups is by creating a new ecosystem in the country, by creating infrastructure, simplification of government processes, and changing the mindset of people. सुनने से शुरू करके किसी एक startup का करीब करीब सात हजार करोड़ रुपए की पूंजी तक पहुंचना तब एक unicorn बनता है. और आज आठ दस दिन में एक नया unicorn इस देश में हमारे नौजवान बना रहे हैं. ये भारत के युवाओं का सामर्थ्य है सफलता की नई ऊंचाई प्राप्त करने की इच्छा शक्ति का उदाहरण है हैकेथॉन्स हैव बिकम अ स्ट्रांग फाउंडेशन फॉर स्टार्टअप्स आर स्कूल्स आर फंक्शनिंग एज अ नर्सरी फॉर स्टार्टअप्स अटल टिंकरिंग लैब्स एंड स्कूल्स एंड मोर देन 700 इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर्स हैव आल्सो प्लेड वाइटल रोल्स टू सेट अप स्टार्टअप्स इन द कंट्री ही फर्दर एडेड Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that along with Indore and Bhopal other cities would also be made startup hubs in the state he informed that funding of 700 crore rupees has come in Indore in the startup sector which is already a leader in cleanliness Mr Chauhan said that the decision of concession and stamp duty is also being taken in the policy other suggestions received from the youth will also be implemented a report In the new startup policy of MP special attention has been paid to the development of the startup ecosystem to meet this objective a number of provisions have been included such as assistance in investment program planning lease rental extension and patents to startups and incubators the new policy will provide additional 20% support to the women led startups and to create interest for innovation in startups among school and college level students by special programs along with the various types of discounts to startups a special incentive assistance of rupees 1 crore will also be given to selected startups and innovators in order to give strength to the startup policy madhya pradesh venture finance limited and madhya pradesh venture finance trustee limited have been merged with the madhya pradesh lagu udyog nigam to form an exclusive venture capital for funding support to startups in future sanjeev sharma air news bhopal President Ramnath Kovind left on a state visit to Jamaica and St Vincent and Grenadines this morning. This is the first ever visit by an Indian head of state to these Caribbean nations. The president will be in Jamaica from the 15th till the 18th of this month where he will hold delegation level talks with his counterpart the Governor General of Jamaica Sir Patrick Allen. He will also meet Prime Minister Andrew Holness and other dignitaries. During the visit the president will address the joint sitting of the two houses of the Jamaican parliament Jamaica and India have friendly relations Jamaica is also one of the Gilmitya countries with a strong Indian diaspora who act as a living bridge with India The visit comes at a significant milestone as 2022 is the 60th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Jamaica Mr Kovind will also pay a state visit to St Vincent and Grenadines SVG from the 18th till the 21st of this month and hold discussions with his counterpart Governor General Ms Susan Tukan he will also meet Prime Minister Dr Ralph Gonsalves as well as other dignitaries President Kovind will address the House of Assembly of the SVG our correspondent accompanying the president has filed this report
The visit of the President Cohen to Jamaica and St. Vincent and Grenadines assumes importance as both these nations are active members in the Caribbean community. The first ever head of state visit to these countries is a continuation of India's high level engagement in the Caribbean region and emphasizes India's continued commitment to work with small island developing countries. This is Arun Kumar Singh for AIR News. India has declared one day state mourning today as a mark of respect to the President of United Arab Emirates and ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He passed away yesterday. Minister of Home Affairs said the national flag will be flown at half mast today across the country on all buildings where the national flag is flown regularly. There will be no official entertainment. In Uttar Pradesh, videographic survey of the Gyan Vapi Mosque will resume today as Supreme Court refused to stop the process. The videographic survey has been conducted following an order by a Varanasi court. Anjuman Intezamia Masjid Committee that manages the Gyan Vapi Mosque moved Supreme Court yesterday seeking to stop the survey. The Apex Court, however, refused to order an immediate stay on the decision of the Varanasi court but listed it for urgent hearing. District Magistrate Koshal Raj Sharma said that the videographic survey has been undertaken after informing all the stakeholders to maintain peace and order. In a suit filed jointly by five Hindu women, the Varanasi court last month ordered an inspection of the premises through Advocate Commissioner Ajay Kumar Mishra. The civil court order was affirmed by the Allahabad High Court on April 26th. All India Radio News has launched a weekly interactive program, Abhyas, for competitive examinations. It is aimed at reaching out to students and job seekers preparing for competitive examinations. The program is in Hindi and is broadcast on every Saturday from 9.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Every week a subject is chosen, students can ask questions through WhatsApp or email and a guest speaker or expert responds to their queries. Questions on each subject are selected on the basis of crowdsourcing from the students across the country. The program also includes segments like explainer, fact file, examination calendar and question of the week. The seventh episode of the program will be aired today. The topic for this episode is Indian history. All India Radio News has got an overwhelming response for the show with questions received from across the country. Dr. Shubhra Sinha, Associate Professor at Kamla Nehru College, Delhi University, will be responding to the queries of aspirants. The seventh episode of Abhyas will be on air at 100.1 FM Gold at 9.30 p.m. today. You can access it on Twitter at AIR News Alerts or on AIR News Official YouTube channel and also on the News on AIR app. Also, for the next episode, scheduled on the 21st of May, the subject chosen is Anthropology. Students can send their queries on WhatsApp number 928-909-4044 or email on abhyas.air at gmail.com. The deadline for submission of questions is the 18th of May. So join us at All India Radio News for the program Abhyas every Saturday at 9.30pm on 100.1 FM Gold. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. At least 27 people killed in a massive fire in Mudka area of Delhi. President Ram Nath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi expresses grief over tragic incident. Prime Minister announces the excretia of 2 lakh rupees each for next of kin of those killed. India has the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, says Prime Minister, launches Madhya Pradesh Startup Policy and Startup Portal. President Ramnath Kovind leaves on a visit to Jamaica and St. Vincent and Grenadines. Security forces neutralized two terrorists involved in killing of Kashmiri Pandit Rahul Bhatt. Videography survey of Gyan Bapi Mosque in Varanasi to begin today as Supreme Court refuses to stop the process. Southwest monsoon to arrive in Kerala ahead of its normal due date. NDMA reviews situation ahead of monsoon. India creates history in Thomas Cup badminton, beat Denmark 3-2 to reach final for the first time. And in IPL cricket, Punjab Kings defeat Royal Challengers Bangalore by 54 rounds in Mumbai. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग 
और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक यू लिसनिंग टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज In Jammu and Kashmir, security forces killed two terrorists in an encounter in Brar Aragam area of Bandipora yesterday. The slain terrorists were involved in the killing of Kashmiri Pandit Rahul Bhatt on Thursday. Talking to AI News, JNK DGP Dilbag Singh said that these terrorists belonging to Lashkar-e Taiba had recently infiltrated from the Pakistani side. इन्होंने जो अमन और शांति को तबाह करने का रास्ता अख्तियार किया है लोग इनका साथ देने के लिए तैयार नहीं है उसकी पखलाट की वजह से ये अपना खौफ का माहौल पैदा करने के लिए इस तरह की कार्रवाई करते हैं यहाँ राहुल भट्ट और हमारे एक पुलिस कांस्टेबल की हत्या जो है वो की गई उसके बाद सब जगह पे पुलिस और फोर्सेज की एक्टिवेशन के चलते जो है वो एक इनकाउंटर हुआ इसमें दो कुखार आतंकी दो पाकिस्तानी इसमें मारे गए और एक और आतंकी जो इनके साथ इस कार्रवाई में शामिल था उसकी तलाश जारी है और जल्द ही हम लोग कामयाब होंगे बकाये मिशन में भी इस तरह की कोई भी कार्रवाई की इजाजत न तो समाज देता है जहां पर और न हम लोग देते हैं कल से जगह जगह पर प्रोटेस्ट हो रहे हैं इनके खिलाफ जुलूस निकल रहे हैं कि इस तरह बेगुनाग लोगों की हत्या करने वालों को कातलों को जो किसी भी सूरत में बख्शा नहीं जाएगा and now let's listen to a special program azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle azadi ka amrit mahotsav azadi ka safar with air news birth of a nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. On the 14th of May 1857, during the first war of independence, Bahadur Shah Zafar set up a national government at Delhi. After the outbreak of the first war of independence against British rule at Meerut on the 10th of May 1857, when the revolting sepoys of the British Indian Army came to Delhi and implored Bahadur Shah to accept their service, he responded to their appeal and assumed leadership of the uprising as the emperor of Hindustan. Agata nahi hai dil mera kujde dayar mein kis ki bani along with his sons and other members of the royal family bahadur shah went up to chandni chowk and addressed the patriotic forces as the supporters of the uprising regarded him as their legitimate sovereign the uprising against british rule started in many parts of the country in the name of bahadur shah bahadur shah set up a national government at delhi on the 14th of may 1857 and all hindu and muslim officers rajas and rajas were called to attend the court he also desired cooperation from all and thus sent circulars to the jagirdars and amirs calling upon them to join the war against the british for the next 4 months delhi remained as the main center of the first war of independence we remember freedom fighter arun chandra guha who was born on the 14th of may 1892 in barisal bengal guha ran saraswati library through which he published his writings to arouse national sentiment guha also published a weekly journal titled swadhinta that was banned in 1930 and four of its editors were convicted for sedition by the british arun chandra guha joined the jugantar party in 1906 
He was arrested and detained multiple times for his participation in the activities of this party. He was also arrested during the non-cooperation movement in 1920. After his release, he became a part of the West Bengal Pradesh Congress Committee. Subsequently, Gohar joined the All India Congress Committee in 1923, where he continued as a member for 26 years. Arun Chandra Guha was elected to the Constituent Assembly of India from West Bengal. He participated actively in the Constituent Assembly debates. He also served as a member of Parliament in the first, second, and third Lok Sabha. Guha was an avid writer. Some of his notable works include Aurobindo and Jugantar, Srishti O Sabhyata, and Desh Parichaya. AIR News pays tribute to the great nationalist. We also remember Sudhanshu Bimal Chanda, who hailed from Chittagong. Sudhanshu was an active member of the Anushilan Samiti. He was arrested for his revolutionary activities on the 31st of May 1935 and detained in the Chittagong jail. Put under village domicile at Keshapur, Jessore in 1935, he died on the 14th of May 1936. We salute freedom fighter Sudhanshu Bimal Chanda. The 14th of May is also the death anniversary of nationalist Allah Baksh Umar Sumro, born in 1903 in Sindh, now in Pakistan. Allah Baksh was a zamindar and a government contractor. After the creation of the Sindh province, he formed the Ittehad Party. In the first legislative assembly elections of 1937, the Ittehad Party, with the help of the Congress, formed the new ministry with Allah Baksh as chief minister. The government led by Allah Baksh continued to function from 1938 to 1942. Being a true nationalist, Allah Baksh refused to join the separatist politics of the Muslim League. In 1940, when the All India Azad Conference was convened in Delhi, Allah Baksh was chosen to preside over the session. When the Quit India Movement was launched, he rented a big bungalow at Karachi to help Satyagrahis. and also visited the Karachi jail to help them in September 1942 when the quit india movement was at its peak he resigned from the defense council and relinquished the titles given by the british in protest unfortunately the brave nationalist allah bakhsh sumro was assassinated on the 14th of may 1943 by one of the muslim league extremists while he was traveling to his hometown of shikarpur air news pays tribute to the brave son of the soil that brings us to the end of this episode of azadi ka safar with aiir news see you in the next episode tomorrow the country's overall exports including merchandise and services scaled a new high in the last month overall imports exhibited a growth of around 39% in comparison to the corresponding period of last year the country's exports are estimated to be 67.79 billion us dollars in april of 2022 In badminton the Indian men's team created history by entering the finals of the Thomas Cup for the first time after defeating Denmark 3-2 in the semi-finals HS Pranoy took the team into the finals after beating Denmark's Rasmus Gemke 3-21 21-9 21-12 in the fifth and deciding match of the semi-final tie yesterday India will now face with, with, with Indonesia in the summit clash tomorrow earlier India's ace Shatler Kedambi Srikanth registered a thumping win against Anders Andersen 2018 12-21 21-15 the Indian duo of Satvik Sairaj Rankireddy and Chirag Shetty won against Kim Astrup and Mathias Christiansen In IPL cricket Punjab Kings defeated Royal Challengers Bangalore by 54 runs at the Brabon Stadium in Mumbai last night. Put into bat Punjab Kings scored 209 for 9 in the stipulated 20 overs then defeated Bangalore to 155 for 9. Today Kolkata Knight Riders will lock horns against Sunrisers Hyderabad at the MCA Stadium in Pune at 7:30 p.m. The southwest monsoon is likely to hit Kerala on the 27th of this month. This year the onset of monsoon over Kerala is likely to be earlier than the normal date of onset. Southwest monsoon normally sets in over Kerala on the 1st of June with a standard deviation of about 7 days. 
Indian Meteorological Department in its forecast has said that in the Indian monsoon region, initial monsoon rains are experienced over South Andaman Sea. The monsoon winds then advance northwestwards across the Bay of Bengal. As per the normal dates of monsoon onset, the southwest monsoon advances over the Andaman Sea around the 22nd of May. In association with enhanced cross equatorial winds, conditions are becoming favorable for advance of southwest monsoon into South Andaman Sea, Nicobar Islands, and some parts of southeast Bay of Bengal around 15th of this month. Talking to AI News, weather scientist R.K. Jenamani said, as per the IMD prediction we have released yesterday, monsoon will arrive in Canada earlier than the normal date is first June. And we have predicted surprise May. Even the error of the date is plus minus uh, four to five days. All features are showing that monsoon arrive for Kerala earlier than the normal day. Before, uh, no one. And that is just the 27th May. The National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, has held a review meeting on the pre-monsoon situation for the southwest monsoon. The meeting reviewed the state of disaster management plans of 19 states and union territories. Discussions were held on ensuring functionality of state emergency operation centers and district emergency operation centers round the clock during the entire year. In the meeting, the Indian Meteorological Department informed that the southwest monsoon is likely to be normal this year. The NDRF is already in consultation with states and union territories planned for pre-monsoon deployment for most vulnerable areas with respect to flooding. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will inaugurate the National Cyber Forensic Laboratory, NCFL, in Hyderabad this afternoon. During his day-long visit to the city, Mr. Shah will take part in a couple of programs. Now let us uh, take a look at the weather forecast for today. The National Capital Delhi will have heat wave. Temperature will hover between 28 and 44 degrees. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 35 degrees. Chennai is likely to have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Temperature will hover between 27 and 37 degrees. Kolkata is likely to have mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 28 and 36 degrees. Jammu will have mainly clear sky. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky. Leh will have mainly clear sky with temperature hovering between 9 and 21 degrees. Gilgit will have mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 17 and 37 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. Vishakapatnam will have thunderstorm with rain. Bangalore will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Hyderabad will have gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Guwahati, Imphal, Shillong, Aizol, Kohima, and Itanagar will have gently cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Gangtok will have gently cloudy sky with few spells of rain or thunder showers. And now an overview of today's newspapers. All newspapers carry reports today of a fire engulfing a three-story commercial building in West Delhi's Mundka area on their front pages. 27 dead in Delhi office fire told likely to go up, reports the Tribune. Writing on the forthcoming visit of Prime Minister Modi to Nepal, the Asian Age Court Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra saying, Modi's visit to Nepal shows our priority to neighborhood. Protests erupt in Kashmir over Rahul Bhatt's killing, writes the pioneer. The Hindustan Times, quoting Punjab police, says Mohali attack case solved mastermind identified. Indian Embassy to resume operations in Kiev informs the statesman. UAE President Sheikh Khalifa passes away, reports the pioneer. And finally, historic win propels India into first Thomas Cup final. The Indian Express reports that India will line up against 14-time Thomas Cup champions Indonesia on Sunday after a historic 3-2 semi-final victory over Denmark in Bangkok. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. At least 27 people killed in a massive fire in Munka area of Delhi. President Ramnath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi express grief over the tragic incident. Prime Minister announces ex cash of 2 lakh rupees each for the next of kin of those killed. India is the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, says Prime Minister. Launches Madhya Pradesh startup policy and startup portal. President Ramnath Kovind leaves on a visit to Jamaica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Security forces neutralized two terrorists involved in killing of Kashmiri Pandit Rahul Bhatt. Videographic survey of Gyan Vapi Mosque in Varanasi to begin today as Supreme Court refuses to stop the process. 
south west monsoon to arrive in kerala ahead of its normal due date india may review situation ahead of monsoon india created system the thomas cup badminton beat denmark 3-2 to reach final for the first time and in ipl cricket punjab kings defeat royal challengers bangalore by 54 runs in mumbai and with that we end the morning news have a nice day